Welcome to Future Docs Podcast. I'm your co-host, Dr. Pedram Mizani, a family physician and the chief clinical officer here at AC Medical. And I am your other co-host, Dr. Lydia Iskander, a leadership intern here at AC Medical and a residency candidate. We also invite you to watch the video version of this podcast by visiting youtube.com forward slash AC Medical Org. So Dr. Mikhail, uh, welcome to our podcast as well. I'm honored to have you here and thank you so much for your time and, and volunteering to do this with us. Thank you, Dr. Mazani. Thank you, Dr. Skander, for having me today. It's a great pleasure to be here. Of course. So we have three parts. Part one, which we're going to be talking about today is the two types of U.S. clinical experiences which you completed and, and you uh, subsequently recommend to our audiences here. And also we're going to talk about personal statements and, and, and where that made a difference in your application, which is quite unique because a lot of times, a lot of candidates think that, well, personal statement may not matter as much. Part two, we're going to talk about combining mentorship and constructive criticism to be the most competitive version of, of ourselves. So I think that it takes some you know, very special skills to do that. And Dr. Mikhail is going to help us understand that from his perspective. And then part three is how international medical graduates should spot their unfamiliarity with certain aspects of not just U.S. culture, but also U.S. healthcare culture, how to overcome them, and also how to do all of this while building a, you know, an effective network for their specific situation and point in time. So, Dr. Mikhail, how many types of rotations did you complete? Well, I completed two types of rotation. Both of them was with program directors and residents. One was mostly in outpatient clinic. We usually saw around 10 to 15 patients per day. The other one was inpatient and it was a sub-intern. So we used to get co-assigned patients with the residents and they start giving me first days one patient and then they build up until by the end of the rotation was able to take care of three patients with their supervision. Of course, you can handle a lot more patients uh, on, on your own, Thank but of you. course, you kind of you know, stifle it a little bit during these rotations. Of course. Now, what was interesting with your rotations is these, this was done during a very, very special time for everybody in the world, and uh, it was done during COVID. Right, right. And uh, at that time, most of the hospital was not offering any rotations, and uh, it was very, very, very tough to get an inpatient rotation in that time. So all the credit go to AC Medical for this because uh, they secured me a spot in a very, very tough situation, and it shined uh, my in my CV. I appreciate you. Now let's talk about the program directors and and what role they played in your rotations because, you know. Um, you know, program directors are very busy. And so even if we can get a few minutes of their time, it could make a world of difference. So tell us a little bit about your experiences with the program directors and how you made the most of it. So the best thing about rotation with the program director is that you know how they think. You, you try to understand how they pick their uh, candidates how they want the residents to be and also if they if they can like give you some time to give you advice that would be great and also you take their feedback every week during the rotation and that's how you improve yourself and be the best candidate during the interviews did um, any of the program directors uh, give you some interview tips well of course they mentioned a lot about how they like the candidate to be presentable how they like them to speak about themselves with confidence and of course you have to sell yourself sometimes but not to be like overconfident you have to balance it so it's it's tough it's it's it needs a lot of practice too but yes of course they did give a lot of advices and um most of them was also in regard of the behavior answers how to answer those and uh, it's it helped me a lot so now let's talk about residents a lot of times we uh, we underestimate the value of residents in our residency preparation, even some of the feedback from the residents, but residents are incredibly powerful within residency programs. And a lot of them have a lot of say so in the decisions that program directors make. But what was your experience like with the residents in these rotations? Well, the, the, the thing with the residents is that first thing they have been in our shoes last year, most of them, like I would, I'm speaking about PGY1 in the entire year. And they understand how tough the situation is and what we are going through. So their advice are also valuable in regard of, of overcoming those fears and uh, also giving you 
not full support, but also the, put you in the right direction where you should be and how you should overcome all those fears. So one of the things that I think they helped me also in is um, to write notes, uh, how to present a case, and also how to approach programs if you want to like send emails uh, and stuff like this. So I think that having these connections with uh, the residents during those rotations is really helpful. Thank you. Dr. Mikhail, you mentioned a particular component of a residency application, which you learned it was quite important to the program director. Which one was it? It was the personal statement. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sure you were trying to put the personal statement together yourself, and, and I'm sure you did a good job on your own, but you also knew that there were other services available outside of AC Medical, and, and AC Medical in your particular situation also offered the same service within your membership. Tell us a little bit about that, that particular experience and, and how things were done a little bit differently uh, at AC Medical. So my personal statement was horrible when I did it myself. And let me tell you a little bit about my experience with that. So we in, I'm talking about the country where I come from, we don't write personal statement for medical schools or for residency. It's just something that's different and we're not used to it, especially with English, not our first language. So my first personal statement was a piece of a scratch that I just put my thoughts in. And when I first met with the editors from AC Medical, they saw my personal statement and they just didn't like to criticize so bad, but they just, let's leave this, <laughs> let's leave this alone and start doing our own from scratch. So uh, the best thing about AC Medical, which I like the most, is that their service for the personal statement, you meet with the editor yourself and you spend time one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. And um, I think that showed your personality the most because they tend to speak with you, understand your personality and your strengths and your weakness, and they, sh they make it shine in your personal statement. So it's different than any other um, services where you just answer a questionnaire or you just uh, meet with the person once. For AC Medical, you tend to meet as much as you need until you get the personal statement as shining as it could be. And um, a little bit about the personal statement just to cover everything about it also, especially with the interviews going virtual, and I believe it's going to stay like this for good because program directors like it that way, candidates like that way, it's better for both. Even if they say so next year, they might go to hybrid, something between both. They are not seeing us. So they don't know how we are in regard of the personality. So personal statement is holding higher value now at AIDS more than before because it shows how good as a person you are. Because it, put yourself in, in the shoes of a program director. They don't want a candidate that are a troublemaker. In short, you have to show your personality that you are a team worker, you are a kind person, and you are here to help. You want to do the job, and uh, you want to be part of the team. That's why I think personal statement is becoming more valuable than before. How do you think in a personal statement, if it's being collaborated with, uh, with an editor, with a writer, how can I make sure that we preserve your personality within a personal statement? That's yeah, a good question. This was a challenge and uh, that's uh, that's what uh, the editors from AC Medical helped me. Everything has to be an example. You can't say just I'm a team worker or I'm a good person. You have to show an example and it has to be real coming from you. So that's that's the whole challenge. And, um, and it's also hard to put this in words. So it needs someone that's professional that did it before and just take the story from you or the example and then put it into word that makes sounds and are understandable and easy to read for the anybody that reads it not only the program director so it's it's a challenge it's not easy how much time do you think it takes to build uh, well it it's different from from person to person for me it took like around a month some people they take more but what i what i uh, understood about the personal statement from my experience it's 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 not easy to be done and you will never feel satisfied about it remember <laughs> when you took a, a look at my personal statement and you told me it's 65 percent and that's a low score i was so happy because 65 for me was in, in comparison to my first one was a very 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 huge advancement so yeah i i know that the standard for ac medical or higher you tend to give like 75 to be approved or maybe more but for me 65 was very satisfying because my I, I tried. 
it's hard. It's not easy. And I think uh, for our listeners, just so that everybody uh, kind of understands this a little bit better idea about how uh, our approach is to residency application, uh, we, we don't try to get it done in, in one sitting. And uh, we really love for it to just sit down and marinate in your mind and in our minds. And we all have to feel good about it, especially, you know, you, Dr. Mikhail, or the rest of our members, because you got to be able to defend everything in an interview. And so that process takes a long time. And, and you know, we'll score the process, we even score our own work, and we we try not to be biased, and then we will will let you know if it's if it's not usable, and then we will keep working on it, and then we'll repetitively go over and over again. And once it gets to about 80, 85 percent in the analysis sessions, then then we'll tell you, okay, you, you can use it now. Seventy five is our is our cutoff line, and that's what Dr. Mikhail was uh, was speaking of. Thank you so much, Dr. Mikhail. Thank you so much for uh, sharing all this information in this part one. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Dr. Mikhail, for your time and for your valuable thoughts. I personally learned from them. You are always welcome to co-host a podcast on any topic you find beneficial to our listeners. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. And uh, to all of our listeners, uh, this concludes this Future Docs podcast episode. And please join us again uh, next time for the both part two, which will be episode number 66 and part three episode 67 with uh, Dr. Mikhail, of course. If you are listening to this podcast, be sure to watch the video form on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash AC Medical Org. For questions or comments, email our producers directly at podcast at acmedical.org or visit our website at acmedical.org. Thank you for your time. See you next week. Thank you, Dr. Mikhail. See you next Thank week. Thank you, Dr. Mikhail. Thank you, Dr. Skandir.